Welcome to Lucid Mind Chemistry channel. In this video, I have compiled questions related to trends in physical and chemical properties of period 3 elements such as melting point, conductivity, electronegativity, radius, ionization energies, etc. For similar topics and question timestamps, read video description. Question 12. X and Y are two elements in the period 3 of periodic table. They, they combine to form compound Z. X forms a soluble acidic oxide. The oxidation number of X in this oxide is plus 4. Y forms an amphoteric oxide. What is the formula of compound Z? The elements in period 3 are sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine and so on. Now the oxides will be sodium oxide, magnesium oxide, aluminum oxide, silicon oxide, phosphorus oxide, sulfur oxides. In the question they have stated that X forms a soluble acidic oxide. Now we know that non-metal oxides are acidic in nature, so therefore it could be silicon dioxide, phosphorus oxide or the oxides of sulfur, as these are acidic in nature. And it says Y forms an amphoteric oxide. The only oxide in group 3 which is amphoteric in nature is aluminum oxide. The oxidation number of X is given as plus 4. Let's find the oxidation states. In silicon we have plus 4. In phosphorus oxide we have plus 5. In sulfur dioxide again we have plus 4 and in sulfur trioxide we have plus 6. So from these observations we can say that element X could be silicon or sulfur. Element Y would be aluminum. As no silicon aluminum compound is given in the options, so therefore X is not silicon, it would be sulfur. Now aluminum is metal and the oxidation state is plus 3 while sulfur is non-metal and the oxidation state is negative 2. So the formula will be Al2S3. The correct option is therefore B. Question 35. Which rows correctly show the relative electrical conductivities of the sets of three period 3 elements? We know that in period 3, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine are present. Among these metals, sodium, magnesium and aluminum, the electrical conductivity increases along the period. This is because sodium can lose just one electron, magnesium can lose two electrons and aluminum can lose three electrons. So increasing the number of electrons also increases the conductivity. Silicon is a semiconductor. So its conductivity is less than these metals. While phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine are insulators. Moving towards the option, in one sodium has the greatest conductivity, it is more than silicon and silicon is more than chlorine. So we can see that chlorine is insulator, silicon is semiconductor and sodium is a metal. So one is true. In second we can see aluminum, then magnesium, then phosphorus. As aluminum is more conductive as compared to magnesium and phosphorus is insulator. So therefore, this series is also correct. Option 3, Sulfur is greater than Silicon and Silicon is greater than Phosphorus as Sulfur is an insulator. So therefore, 3 is incorrect. Both option 1 and 2 are correct. Therefore, answer is B.
Question number 12. Element X in period 3 has the following properties. Its oxide has a giant structure. It forms a covalent bonds with chlorine. Its oxide will neutralize HCl aqueous. What is element X? They have given four elements, magnesium, aluminum, silicon and phosphorus. Now the oxides will be MgO, Al2O3, SiO2 and P4O10. Magnesium oxide is an ionic compound so it has a giant ionic structure. Aluminum oxide also has a giant structure. Silicon dioxide is a giant covalent compound while phosphorus oxide is a simple molecular one. Second option, it forms covalent bonds with chlorine. As magnesium is a metal, so it forms ionic bond, so it is incorrect. Aluminum can form covalent bond, so it could be aluminum chloride. Similarly, silicon tetrachloride also makes a covalent bond. Third option, its oxide will neutralize HCl aqueous. As we know that the oxide of aluminum is amphoteric in nature, so it can neutralize acid as well as alkali. Second is the oxide of silicon. Silicon dioxide is acidic in nature, so therefore it cannot neutralize HCl. So the correct option is B, aluminum. Question 13. The relative melting points of four consecutive elements in periodic table are shown in the graph. The elements all have proton numbers less than 20. Which element is in group 16? Now the element present in group 16 could be of period 3. As in period 3 we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Now the atomic number of sodium is 11, for magnesium it is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now looking at melting point for sodium which is in group 1 of the periodic table, then we have magnesium which is in group 2 of the periodic table. As the number of outer shell electron increase, so therefore the melting point also increases from sodium to aluminum. In aluminum, metallic bonding is stronger as compared to magnesium, which is stronger as compared to sodium. This is because sodium just loses one electron, while magnesium can lose two electrons, and aluminum can lose three electrons. So now, higher the number of electrons lost, greater will be the charge. So greater will be the force of attraction between the atoms. For silicon, we can see that silicon does not make metallic bond. It forms giant covalent compound. So therefore the melting point of silicon is greater than aluminum. Now phosphorus is a non-metal and it occurs in the form of a molecule of four atoms. While sulfur exists in the molecule of 8 atoms, chlorine exists in the molecule of 2 atoms and argon is single. As we know that for larger molecules the intermolecular force of attraction is greater because there are greater number of electrons so therefore the melting point of phosphorus will be less as compared to the melting point of sulfur. Again in chlorine we can see that only 2 atoms are present in the molecule so therefore the melting point will reduce. Again for argon which is single, there are no forces of attraction so therefore the melting point will reduce further. So we can see that after silicon the melting point dropped and then for sulfur it increased and then for chlorine and argon it decreased further. Now looking at this graph, the melting point is 273 which is equal to 0 degrees centigrade. As B and C have higher melting point as compared to 0 degree centigrade so it means it is not gas. So it could be phosphorus and sulfur. Then chlorine melting point is very low as compared to sulfur. So D could be chlorine. While the melting point of A is very high. 
so it could be silicon. Among these four, sulfur is present in group 6 of the periodic table, so the answer is C. Question number 14, elements D and E are both in period 3. Element D has the smallest atomic radius in period 3. There are only two elements in period 3 which have lower melting point than element E. Only two elements have lower melting point than E. Elements D and E react together to form compound L. Which compound could be L? In the question, they have given that element D and E react together to form compound L. It means that they are reactive substances, so therefore it is not from group 8 in the periodic table. Because group 8 consists of noble gases that are unreactive. The second point is that element D has the smallest atomic radius in period 3. So we know that in the periodic table, what happens is that the atomic radius decreases along the period atomic size decreases. This is because of the increase in nuclear charge and the number of shells remain constant. So apart from group 8 we just have one element left which is chlorine. So element D could be chlorine because chlorine has the smallest atomic size in period 3. So D could be chlorine. Let's find out about E. In the question, it says there are only two elements in period 3 which have a lower melting point than element E. So let's find out the trend in melting point. We can see that in period 3 what happens that the melting point increases from sodium to silicon. This is because of the stronger intermolecular forces of attraction or interatomic forces of attraction. And then we can see that the trend is decreasing from sulfur to argon. So melting point increases for the first half and then melting point decreases from sulfur to argon. So the only two elements which have lowest melting point in period 3 are chlorine and argon. In between this trend, phosphorus has lower melting point as compared to sulfur. This is because phosphorus exists as a molecule of 4 atoms while sulfur exists as a molecule of 8 atoms. And we know that when the number of atoms increase, the size of molecule increase. And when the size of molecule increase, the intermolecular forces of attraction or van der Waals forces also increase. So therefore, phosphorus melting point is lower then the melting point of sulfur. So element E could be phosphorus. Now phosphorus and chlorine D and E both react together to form a compound called PCL3 phosphorus trichloride. So therefore the answer is D. Question 4. Element W is in period 3 of the periodic table and has a solid white oxide X. X is thermally stable and has a very high melting point. X is slightly soluble in water. Which row describes the structure and bonding of X? Now in period 3 we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine. Now in the question they have given that X forms solid white oxide which has very high melting point. So it means it is not phosphorus oxide, sulfur oxide and chlorine does not form any oxides. Then we have aluminum oxide and silicon dioxide which are insoluble in water. While X is slightly soluble in water, it means it is not aluminum or silicon. So now we have sodium and magnesium left. Both sodium and magnesium are metals. So with oxygen, they form ionic bond. So it must be ionic bond. And in ionic bond, positive ions and negative ions are present in giant three-dimensional 
latest there are no small molecules present the answer is therefore c Question 13 x y and z are consecutive elements in period 3 of the periodic table element y has the highest first ionization energy and the lowest melting point of these three elements what are the identities of x y and z now the elements given in this table based on the atomic numbers can be written in a sequence like this we have sodium magnesium aluminum silicon phosphorus and sulfur let's first look at the melting point we know that sodium magnesium and aluminum are metals and the melting point increases as the number of electrons lost increase the metallic bonding becomes stronger so therefore melting point increases now in silicon we can see that silicon forms giant covalent compound because of the giant structure the melting point will be more than aluminum now phosphorus occurs in the form of small molecules made up of four atoms and sulfur in the form of atoms of eight so the melting point will drastically decrease in phosphorus and increase a little bit in sulfur this is because phosphorus has less intermolecular forces of attraction as compared to sulfur. Now in general ionization energy increases across the period. This is because the atomic number increases and also the electrostatic forces increase. The atomic number of silicon is 14 so we can write the electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. 3p x 3p y and each has one electron similarly for phosphorus 15 we can write the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and then we have three single electrons in each p orbital similarly for sulfur we can write electronic configuration as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and then in 3p orbitals we have 4 electrons in which 2 electrons are present in px, 1 in py and 1 in pz. Now the ionization energy will increase from silicon to phosphorus as the atomic number has increased but from phosphorus to sulfur the ionization energy will decrease this is because this electron is removed first and there is spin pair repulsion present due to this repulsion between these electrons the energy required to remove electron will be less so p has the highest first ionization energy among these three and also p has the lowest melting point so why should be phosphorus the answer is therefore d question 14 x y and z are three elements in third period x reacts with chlorine to give a liquid product Y reacts with chlorine to give a solid product that dissolves in water to give a solution of pH 7 which is neutral. Z reacts with chlorine to give a solid product that dissolves in water to give a solution of pH 6 which is slightly acidic. Which elements are good conductors of electricity? Now in third period we have sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur. X reacts with chlorine to give a liquid product. It means X is not sodium, magnesium or aluminum because these three are metals and they give solid product with chlorine. So it could be silicon or sulfur as they form liquid product. 
so silicon and sulfur are bad conductors so therefore it is not x Y reacts with chlorine to give a solid product that dissolves in water to give a solution of pH 7 now sodium form sodium chloride which gives a solution of pH 7 while magnesium is slightly acidic and aluminum is quite acidic in nature so therefore Y could be sodium and sodium is a good conductor so therefore it could be Y Z reacts with chlorine to give solid product that dissolves in water to give a solution of pH 6 the only component that gives slightly acidic solution is Mg as it forms magnesium chloride and its solution is slightly acidic pH of about 6.5 so therefore magnesium is a good conductor so it should be Z as both Y and Z which are sodium and magnesium are good conductors so therefore answer is B Question 13. The graphs show a trend in four physical properties of elements in period 3, excluding argon. Which graph has electronegativity on the y-axis? Now, electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract a shared pair of electron towards itself. For example, when hydrogen and fluorine, they make a bond. Fluorine is more electronegative, so this pair will be attracted towards fluorine. That's why fluorine becomes partial negative and hydrogen becomes partial positive. Now electronegativity depends on two factors, one is the size of atom, electronegativity is inversely proportional to the size of atom and it is directly proportional to nuclear charge. So along the period, in period 3, the atomic size decreases. So therefore electronegativity will increase, the nuclear charge increases as the number of protons in the nucleus increase, so therefore electronegativity will also increase. So the only graph that represents the increase in electronegativity is D. As we can see that the electronegativity of sodium is lower than magnesium than aluminum. It is increasing as we are moving along the period. The answer is therefore D. Question 12. The melting points of period 3 elements phosphorus to argon are shown in table. We have 317, 392, 172, 84. Which factor explains the changes in melting point from phosphorus to argon? Now melting point always depends on the intermolecular forces of attraction. It does not depend on the type of bonding within the molecule because in melting point the intermolecular forces are broken. Actually the bonds are not broken. Now we know that phosphorus exists as a molecule of four atoms in the form of P4 while sulfur can exist in a molecule of eight atoms as S8. Chlorine exists in diatomic molecule as Cl2 and argon is always monoatomic. So we can say that greater the number of atoms present in a molecule, stronger will be the intermolecular forces of attraction. Therefore, sulfur has highest melting point. And as argon is singular monoatomic, so therefore its melting point will be lowest. A. The changes in electronegativity from phosphorus to argon. As we are studying the molecules of similar atoms, so therefore electronegativity does not have anything to do with intermolecular forces. Part B, the changes in first ionization energy from phosphorus to argon. This is also incorrect because first ionization energy does not have anything to do with the intermolecular forces. Part C, the increase in number of electrons in each atom from phosphorus to argon. This is true statement because number of protons increase and number of electrons also increase. But this statement does not define the melting points because for melting point we are not studying individual atoms, we are studying molecules. So this is incorrect. Part D, the number of atoms in each molecule of the element from phosphorus to argon. As we can see that the number of atom increase, so melting point also increases. S8 has the highest melting point, then we have P4, then Cl2 and then argon. So this statement seems to be correct. Answer is therefore D. 
Thanks for watching. If this was useful, please do like, subscribe and share.